Hi, it's Dwyer. Today is June the 9th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site. DwyerVIP.com, free site. Let's talk about a fight that I think is bettable. Jamel Charlo against Austin Trout. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this video is not for the tone deaf, we'll call them odds deaf people, right? Folks who are just looking for winners and stuff like that aren't going to understand the idea of taking an underdog when the odds are staggered, when you're getting value, right? I understand Jamel Charlo's the big favorite. I understand he's unbeaten. Quite frankly, Jamel Charlo is likely to win this fight. But that's not the way I'm going to play it. I believe this fight's bettable. Austin Trout is a 6-1 to one underdog. Let me repeat that. Austin Trout is a 6-1 to one underdog. I personally don't believe that there is a fighter at 154 pounds who would beat Austin Trout in 6 out of 7 matches, which is what the odds suggest. Let's go one step further. Understand, Austin Trout's a guy who fought Canelo, went the distance. He fought Eris Landy Lara, went the distance. He fought the bigger Charlo brother, Jamal Charlo, who right now is at middleweight. He went the distance. I understand. Jared Hurd takes him out in the 10th round of their fight. Again, second half of the fight. But understand, Jared Hurd is a big fighter, physically big, who is very high volume and who wants to trade in the pocket. That's very different than Jermel Charlo, who is a stylist and who is low volume. The bet I'm proposing here, and understand the hedge, we're just trying to set it up. So either one side ensures the other perfectly or imperfectly, right? Or we could win if either half of the bet wins, right? The bet I'm recommending is to take Austin Trout at six to one odds, big underdog. Take Trout to win the fight, hedged with the over nine and a half rounds, folks. That's the midway point of the 10th round at a minus 300. Let's break it down numerically. If I want to swing for the fences, right, I can put $1 on Austin Trout simply to win. If I win that bet, the casino gives me back 6 bucks profit plus the return of my $1, right? So, one dollar on Trout, possible winnings of six bucks. I can then put three dollars, three dollars on the over nine and a half rounds. If it goes over, I get my dollar back. Right, the hedge here is just to pay for the swing at the fences. Again, one dollar on Trout to win six, three dollars on the over nine and a half rounds. Whoever wins the fight, if it makes it past the midway point of the tenth round, I get my dollar back. Let's talk about some other scenarios. If Austin Trout wins the fight by decision, and don't laugh at that possibility. As I said earlier, Jamel Charlo is low volume. If Trout wins the fight by decision, Trout has a pretty good jab, at times can be an active southpaw. You win both halves of the bet. Right? So you win the plus 600, you win the minus 300. But understand the risk involved. If Jamel Charlo is able to do what Jamal Charlo could not do, if Jamel knocks out Austin Trout in the first nine and a half rounds of this fight, you lose it all. 
Let me also say this too for those of you researching the fight. Right back in my day, fighters wanted to look tough. They wanted to look like they had nothing to worry about. Right? So, when an interviewer would say, hey, tell me about your next opponent, many of these fighters, even craftsmen, would pretend that they didn't know anything about the opponent. That all they knew was what their trainer told them. And so some of these guys, some guys still do this, right? From time to time, I see Manny Pacquiao do this. Some guys would tell the interviewer, you know what? I don't even know what this guy looks like. Right? I, I'll meet him at the weigh-in. I don't even know what this guy looks like. I don't know what he does in the ring. I've heard some things, but I haven't seen him. Right? I'll just follow the direction of my corner. Here, Austin Trout is doing you, the fight fan, a favor. Right? In the pre-fight hype for this fight, he's comparing the unbeaten Charlo brothers. Keep in mind, this is how fighters should be judged. The guy has been in the ring with Jamal Charlo. He's seen Jamal Charlo for 12 rounds. He knows him. He's not speculating about him. And, of course, he's about to be in the ring with Jamal Charlo. So what Trout is telling you is, look, I know who this guy is. I've watched his fights. I've seen him on film. Trout even goes further and says, look, Jamal Charlo beat me. Jamal Charlo is better than Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo, his next opponent, <coughs> does things in the ring that Jamal Charlo, who's more of a power puncher, right? Jamal Charlo is there to take you out, right? Set up shop in the pocket and trade punches with you, right? Has a jab and stuff like that, but you know he's going to end up with a two-hand attack during parts of the fight. Right? What Trout is telling you is that Jamel Charlo, the champ at 154, is actually harder to find in the ring. It's more of a chess match. You don't really know what he's going to do. He's giving you different looks. He's giving you different angles. Right? He's doing different things. Now, what that tells me, and I understand to many, they're going to say, well, he lost to Jamal Charlo. And now he's saying that Jamal Charlo is better than Jamal Charlo. What conclusion should I reach? But understand, we're asking a different question here. We're asking the simple question of, has Trout learned anything? Right? Is Trout going to do anything different? And does Trout have the opportunity to beat the 6-1 to one odds or to get this fight into the last two rounds and a half. I believe Trout's a live underdog. Right? Again, Jamel Charlo has looked bad to me in some fights. He looked great in the Erickson Lubin fight, but I personally don't learn a lot from first round KOs where you catch the guy cold. Right? Charles Hadley, let's face it, Hadley isn't in Jamel Charlo's league. <coughs> Austin Trout is. Understand, Austin Trout used to spar with one of history's better middleweight champions, Sergio Martinez. Right? I personally feel Austin Trout beat Canelo. Right? Understand, too. Canelo, knockout puncher. Jamal Charlo, knockout puncher. Trout goes 24 rounds with them. 24, right? He's the definition of KG veteran, right? He's been in with world-class fighters. He's held his own, right? So what we're really doing here isn't attacking Jamel Charlo, who I think is a tremendous fighter. As I said, Jamel Charlo probably wins the fight. What we're actually doing is attacking a preposterous boxing line. 
Again, no fighter at 154 pounds. None. Should be a 6-1 to one favorite over Austin Trout. Right? Understand. He's fought the best in the division already. Folks, he went 12 rounds with Arislandi Lara. Right? Jared Hurd stops him. Okay, fine. <coughs> Tenth round. Tenth round. Here are the over-unders, nine and a half rounds. In other words, the midway point of the tenth round. In other words, Trout is tested. He's a step up to me from Charles Hatley. Right? He's far more experienced than Erickson Lubin. Understand, I still think Erickson Lubin's special. But let's just say Trout has vastly more experience than Erickson Lubin. Right? So, I'll be the casino's huckleberry. This is an odds play. This is the kind of thing where you're in the casino and you say, yeah, I think I think Jamel Charlo should be the favorite. Then they tell you the odds and you say, oh, I need a piece of this. What do you tell me? Six to one? Is that right? <coughs> I'll be the casino's huckleberry. I like Austin Trout at six to one to win the fight. I'm going to hedge the play at minus 300 with the over nine and a half rounds. Why is a minus 300 viable as a hedge? It's because you're getting better than a plus 300 on the other side of the play. You're getting a plus 600 on Austin Trout simply to win. If Trout pulls it off, you'll be in the penthouse. Right? Huge odds, huge win. If Trout just simply has the fight, go as long as his fight did against Jamal Charlo or Arislandi Lara or Saul Alvarez, you'll win. Right? Trout's 32. I know he's the older fighter. Folks, 32 is not that old. Let's also say, too, that Austin Trout strikes me as the kind of guy who keeps himself in shape. He'll be ready for this one. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.